Hi, everyone. Thank you very much for being here, uh, for witnessing our presentation today, especially since uh, it's food time. We're very excited that you're in this room instead of uh, eating. Um, just to clarify something, there are two microphones uh, in the room. Uh, at the end, we'll have Q&A session, so please uh, localize them. They're over there. <laughs> and um, use them in case you have questions. Uh, this will help with the recording so that afterwards it makes sense for the people watching uh, on, on YouTube. So, um, yeah, here we are um, from InnoActive talking today about uh, supplying scalable VR training applications to enterprise. I'm Andrea Radkan, head of marketing at InnoActive. My colleague Thomas Wimmer, software developer, um, will be talking today about um, how to scale VR trainings. We will have a live demo as well, presenting live how uh, we thought we can support the growth of this uh, industry and scaling uh, the adoption in enterprise. And we are excited to have you on board and seeing how we can uh, partner up um, and basically work together to achieve these. A few words about ourselves. You know, Active is... Um, so I'm figuring the clicker. Um, InnoActive is a company uh, based in Munich, founded in 2000, 2013. Um, we are about 30 people working on this purpose already for a few years. Um, and how do we plan to enable scalable VR training in enterprise? Basically, we offer a VR training platform, the Interactive Hub, that uh, scales the production and distribution of VR training. Um, along with this product, we are also um, building up an ecosystem in order to uh, make sure that we join forces and we together are able to um, bring VR to the next level in enterprise. What we have experienced, so I guess um, not many of you, or I, I'm not sure, but uh, not many of you know what we have achieved so far um, in enterprise sector. In 2018, Volkswagen, um, for ex example, announced training 10,000 people uh, using our platform. We are having another large announcement uh, coming up these days with uh, leading airports uh, teaming up to supply the aviation industry with VR trainings. So we've been active in here in supplying a lot of these VR trainings. Now, the question is, of course, uh, you don't solve all of the pains or all of the, um, all of the business needs and all of the uh, requirements with one training solution, right? You have uh, a lot of processes, a lot of customizations, and what typically needs to be done in the end uh, are custom works for this training application. So um, the question is, how do you scale when you have so many processes to train, so many training applications, and um, when in the end you have so much pressure on development? And what I wonder is, do you identify or have you felt the pressure on development when it comes to uh, speed or to costs or the scope? Do you feel like customers or um, in general departments, whoever is in need for a training, do you feel like they are eager to compromise on any of these factors uh, from this um, triangle? Are they uh, willing to reduce the scope or to compromise on quality or um, to reduce costs like in, in any way? So the question is, how do you, uh, in the end, manage to produce content and to distribute this content in a way that um, satisfies all of these uh, requirements. And basically, this is what we've um, wondered ourselves as well, and this is what brought us to the um, product that we offer. I'm not sure where I should point. There, okay. Um, and uh, th this product is basically meant to um, bring together the enterprise and the content agencies. How does it work? Uh, we are offering a visual authoring tool for trainings that is based, um, is an extension layer for Unity uh, in order for non-developers to be able to create trainings without programming. Um, however, 
what we have seen is that the scenarios uh, out there are rather complex and rich, uh, and although standardization is a good idea, we are not there yet. So how do you still enable these uh, training applications, like the, a simple creation, but uh, support the complexity as well? So uh, what the product is doing on top of this, um, so behind this layer that uh, allows simplified editing of uh, trainings, there is a training uh, SDK that enables programmers to create templates and to extend functionalities um, through C Sharp, basically, and push these functionalities to a larger audience. So Thomas here will talk about how this works in uh, more detail, what are the different roles and how they can work together in order to um, achieve scalable production of VIA trainings. Thank you, Andrea. Um, I'm going to show you how we can create a training uh, within, let's say, the next half an hour. It's going to be a very simple one. Um, just a heads up, we tested it. I cannot make uh, Unity bigger, unfortunately. So um, if you're in the last rows and cannot read everything, I'm sorry. Maybe you can move up a bit further to the front. Um, but to start, um, this is just an empty project with an empty scene. We have a main camera. We have a directional light. Uh, we, um, we just imported our trainings SDK and uh, some prefabs that I prepared so I don't have to do everything on my own. So how do we start? Um, to set up a training, we have this, um, this menu where we can simply set up our current scene as a training scene. So the whole setup uh, step is done for you. We um, in initialize some objects, um, some prefabs that are done. The most important ones uh, I just want to point out, that is the VRTK setup. We are based on VRTK. And we have a training configuration object. Um, which is doing the whole runtime configuration of the training. So we thought, uh, which training can we show for you within half an hour? We are uh, a Munich-based company. Uh, Oktoberfest started on Saturday, so um, there's nothing more fitting than probably a training that shows you how to serve a beer. So what do we need uh, to serve a beer? Uh, that's why I'm, I'm just going to drag in some objects. So we need a, a mug for sure. It's going to be a very primitive training, I can tell you that much. Um, we, have a, we have a floor, of course. Um, it's still floating. Let's put in some table, uh, somewhere where there's like a barrel where we can have some beer. Um, and a bar that looks good for now. OK, so our scene is set up. Um, there's nothing on these objects ex except for maybe a collider or uh, some rigid bodies to have like basic um, stuff, but there's no logic on there yet. Um, <clears throat> so let's create a new training. We click on Training, Create New. We give it a fancy name. Let's call it Oktoberfest Training. So I can, yeah. And we create it. We now have in this training configuration all, already our selected training set to the Oktoberfest training, so that is already set. Uh, here on the bottom, it's going to be a bit small, but I hope you can see it. Um, we have our workflow editor and a step view. So let's, this is the entry point. Let's create a new step. We just click here, we add a new step, and we call it um, Pick Up Stein. So um, I talked to some Americans. They apparently call the big mug a stein. So I'll stay with this. Uh, as This is going to be our first step. So we put the entry point to the first step. Um, additionally, um, I already create the next step, which I'm going to call place stein, which will then be the step where we place it under uh, the tab. So let's go back into the first step. Um, a step has a transition, so we add a transition. The transition will go to the next step, obviously. And every transition has conditions that have to be fulfilled to um, get into, to move to the next step. So uh, we have a list of pre-done uh, conditions already. Um, you can change them. I will get into this later. And for this, we just want to grab an object, which is uh, the Stein. So we can name it, uh, pick up Stein. Just for convenience and speed, I'm not going to name every, every single condition and behavior. I just leave it like this. Um, and for grabbable, we want to grab the Stein. So I go into uh, my hierarchy, 
I see my Stein, and I add a component. And we have a grabbable property, so we call this property T's, which adds a grabbable property telling I can grab the object, a touchable property, if I can grab something, I can usually touch it, and a scene object. The scene, ob scene object is our identifier. Um, it has a unique name, which just takes it from the name of the, of the object, and we can take this unique name and just paste it down here. So the condition says if I grab the object Stein, which is identified here, the condition is fulfilled and I go into the next step. Sounds good so far. So um, I create a few steps and then we, we run it for the first time. So the second, I wanna um, place the Stein somewhere. So I, I create a transition, I already create the next one so it's a bit more, more visible. I can also click here, create a new tr transition, put it into the next step, and I add a new condition again, uh, which will be a snap object. So we want to snap our Stein to, uh, to a target position. Um, we are based on VRTK. If you don't know VRTK, there will be a talk, I think, later from some guy from Oculus, which is probably going to be very good. Um, it's just convenient functionalities. It's the virtual reality toolkit. So. Um, we want to create a um, snap zone. So we go into our um, bar, which is this thing down there, and we create a simple uh, empty object behind it. We call it Stein Snap Zone. And we add the um, snap drop zone property, or snap zone property. So similar to the grab property, grabable property, we added a snap zone property. It gets the scene object again, which is the identifier, and the uh, snap zone so drop zone um, script, which is just a, a variation of the VRTK standard. I fill this quickly. We want to have a highlight object. We move this up a little so it's standing on there. Um, we want to have some kind of snap duration to make it nice. Some highlight color maybe, um, like this, and a valid highlight color. Let's make that green. Great, and we want to always highlight it. Um, that looks good so far. Um, I save my draining now. I save my scene and I run it the first time. You might see that I'm not using a VR headset. I did not want to do this risky thing on stage, so I'm going to use the VRTK simulator, which is just visualized uh, with like two hands, um, like two balls that are going to be my hands. I hope that works. Oh, I forgot one important thing, actually. Uh, in the training configuration, we need to add, or wherever we want, we add a custom script that I wrote that is just enabling me to start the training whenever I want. Uh, I just put it to um, a key press on R that just runs the training. Um, it gives you the possibility to decide when you want to start your training and when you want to do things with your training. So we have the snaps on down there. We have the mug over there. We start the training, so this is my right hand. I need nothing else than my right hand for this. I move it over. Up. I Wait a second. Oh yeah, I forgot something, sorry. In the condition, we didn't set up the condition for the place Stein, so um, we call this place Stein. Uh, for the target, we want to have the Stein again, which then also needs a uh, um, snappable property, so we can tell it it can be snapped. And in the zone to snap, we want to have this Stein snap zone. So, so we save the training, we save the scene, we run it, and hopefully it works now. And, okay, I start the training. I um, move my hand over, I grab the Stein, I move it down, and of course I forgot something else, but you get the idea until here. So um, the Stein snap zone needs a, a box collider, which is a trigger. Um, and you saw that the uh, snap zone was there from the beginning, but maybe that's not something we want. So we go into this place Stein uh, step and add a behavior. The behavior will be that we enable the Stein snap zone, so we don't want to see it from the beginning. So we enable this when it's here, and we disable it from the beginning. 
So we don't see the, uh, the snap zone anymore from the beginning, but it will be enabled as soon as I uh, fulfill the first step. Then you will also see that something happens. Um, so a behavior is basically something that happens when you enter the step. So this time it hopefully works. So we start it again. Okay. You don't you see there is no snap zone currently because it's disabled. We start the tr training, we grab the stein. Uh, object reference. Hmm. I'm sorry about that. What happened? So we we grab the we grab the object. Um, we have it here. Um, Stein step. The condition is set. The new step. Oh, we haven't saved it, I guess. I'm sorry about the inconvenience. If this doesn't work, I prepared a video. It actually should work. Maybe it's just uh, the, uh, the stage and obviously the demo. And so we start it. We grab it. We move it over. It activates. I snap it in. OK, it worked. So that was the only problem. I didn't save it. Uh, sorry for that. So OK, you saw these two steps worked. So I'm going to go a bit quicker from now on. Um, by creating these steps. So my next step is I want to open the tab, uh, open tab. Um, for this, I want to have a condition where I simply touch the tab. That should be fine for now. So we go into the barrel, we click on the tab, we add a scene object to have a, a identifier for this. This is called tab. We paste it in here. We save the training, so as soon as, as I uh, touch the tab, it works. Like we go into the next, the next step. The next step is going to be a bit uh, um, different. We uh, call it fill beer, and we just add a behavior, and we add a behavior sequence, um, which we call the fill beer behavior. And uh, we add a, a list of um, a, a sequence of um, of behaviors. So inside the tab, we have a um, stream of beer, which you can see here. We give this a scene object. We call it beer stream. So the first thing that I want to have is I want to add a behavior which enables my beer stream. And then I have my my mug, and my mug has like a beer component which consists of four parts of a beer. Um, I give these all the scene object, they're called now beer one, beer two, beer three, and a head, because we want to have a nice head. And we enable these objects after each other, which is um, kind of tedious, but we do it for now. So we add some, uh, we enable the beer stream, then the first. Uh, part, then we uh, set a delay, then we enable the second part, we add another delay, um, we enable the third part, we have another delay, 4.3 seconds, and we um, disable the beer stream, we don't want to have any overflow of beer, and we enable the head, because the head is important, at least in Germany. Um, so this is my behavior sequence. As you see, there is, we don't need a condition for here. So um, we just want to go on as soon as the uh, beer is filled. So we set it to is blocking, which this means is um, the condition can be only um, fulfilled as soon as the sequence is done. OK, um, we go on with the next step, which is then um, grabbing the beer again. So pick up beer, we need to drink it at some point. So we pick up the beer, um, we send the transition over here, um, and um, as a behavior, we want to disable the uh, Stein snap zone, so we cannot snap in there anymore, so that is gone. And um, 
for a transition to our last step, which we call enjoy. Um, we we uh, set the condition to pick up the beer again. So the style. Okay, we saved that. So to go through it again. We pick up the stein, we place it in the snap zone, which already worked. Um, we sorry, we um, touch the tab, which has um, the scene object here and needs a touchable property, not to forget that. So we know we have to touch it. It has the name tab, so we can touch it. The next one is we fill the beer. We just enable and disable object, objects with a delay within, so we don't need any special properties, um, but we need to disable the stream of beer from the beginning because nobody needs that yet. Um, the condition is we don't need a condition because it's just a blocking behavior sequence, as you can see here. The next one is picking up the stein again, which is a grab object. This one is already a grabable object, so that one is fine. And we disable the snap zone. And in the end, we just enjoy the beer. We don't need anything here. This is just an um, uh, end step. OK, let's see if that works. Uh, oh, um, we should disable our beer because there's nothing in yet. Okay, so okay, so there is no snap zone. Our mug is over there. Fine. I started the training. I grab the beer. It's down there. I snap it in. I touch the tap. It fills up. Wonderful. And um, I cannot grab my beer right now. Question is why? Maybe because I disabled the uh, snap zone too early, but uh, we leave this out for now um, just to go on. So the idea, I think, is clear. The problem is that we have now, um, I, I have no instructions. I know how this training can be done, but uh, someone who is actually supposed to learn this doesn't know what to do. So what we included is uh, text-to-speech which um, I have here, so we enable our text-to-speech with the selected language English. Uh, we have here in the streaming assets, I already prepared um, some localization files. I just drag this over here. And in the, English, um, in the English file, we have a location key, which says something, and we're now going to put this in where we need it. So in the first step, when we start the training, we add a behavior an audio which says play text-to-speech audio, where we put in a localization key, which then will just grab the, the um, corresponding string out of the JSON. We set it to um, is blocking, so we need to wait for the text-to-speech to finish. In the next step, we add uh, another uh, text-to-speech audio, which we set to blocking, which is place, Stein. Uh, open tab, we add a behavior, a text-to-speech, which we will be called, um, I think it was called uh, open tab. That's easy. Open tab. Um, in the fill beer, um, that's a bit, a bit different. Uh, we also add a text-to-speech. Um, I try to be a bit creative on this one, but some sound as animations are always cool. So some beer flow. For pick up beer, we add a behavior, uh, which is enjoy, enjoy beer. We set this to blocking, and in the end, we, um, we do cheers. So I, for now, will... Um, remove this dif disable object, so I hope I can pick it up again. I save my scene, so all I did was just adding these uh, text-to-speech. It's enabled here, and we start the training. I hope the sound works. And I hope, okay. Please pick up the stein from the table. Place the stein under the tap. 
touch the tap to open it. Glug 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 and zish. Pick up your beer and enjoy. Okay, the, uh, the, the picking up is still not working, but I think you get the idea here. It's probably just some small configuration I messed up. Um, so that is the idea here. Uh, we also have multi-language, but I will maybe get back to this later. Now you will, you see we have uh, these pre-made conditions um, and these pre-made behaviors, but maybe that's not for you. Uh, maybe you want to have more than this, and that's where we uh, thought about two different roles. The one role is what I just did. This is the person who gets like a set of behaviors, a set of uh, conditions, and uh, a bunch of assets, but doesn't have to know any coding. Um, but maybe you, as I said, want customized stuff. So um, we give the option to just create new behaviors, new conditions, and just put them to your, um, to your, give them to this developer, uh, to this um, training developer designer who then can use these um, customized um, behaviors. So I created one because um, I thought um, the fill beer thing with the behavior sequence should be done a bit more um, easier and understandable. And plus, if you want to change some time, it's going to be hard. Um, so we delete this for now. And we drag in um, some scripts that I prepared. It's um, two oh, boop, boop. We just move this in. So one is a new behavior that we created. Um, I hope you can see this, make it a bit bigger. Um, it's simply, this is big enough. Um, it simply inherits from our training behavior. It has some references. Um, these references, the scene object references to a beer, to a beer stream, and to a duration, so we know which beer to fill which beer stream to enable and disable, and how long the animation is supposed to go. And then we have some um, just uh, methods that we can override and that then uh, tell us when stuff is supposed to do go. So I simply created a fill beer coroutine where I go through all the childs of the beer and sequentially, um, sequentially enable them and also enable and disable the beer stream that I set in the editor. And all I did in the perform activation is I create the coroutine and I start it. That's all. Uh, additionally, I can, um, I can extend uh, editor configuration so it's actually visible within um, my editor, which I simply add to the list of behaviors I already have. I create a new, so first I create a new menu item uh, with a path and I simply create, put it to the behaviors that I already have. If I now switch into Unity again, um, I am in this behavior, I add a behavior, and since I just dragged the editor configuration in, the system already realizes, okay, there's something new, I update it. Update it. So in here we now have a, uh, uh, um, a new behavior which is called Oktoberfest fill beer. We have a beer and a beer stream. The beer stream is the same. And the animation duration, which I set to two for now, or maybe 2.5, might be better. And um, in my Stein, I create this, um, I have this beer, which all these things underneath. I add a um, new scene object here, so I know what it is. And uh, I copy this beer in here. So that is my custom made, um, my custom-made behavior. The thing here is, um, I as a, um, I as a, a, a programmer, as a coder, I know what's in there. But as a uh, someone who just puts together everything, I don't actually don't care what's in there. I just need to know what's what I have to put here. Um, so let's see if this works. We saved it. Everything's fine. We start it. Please pick up the Stein from the table. We got the instructions again. That's a bit of a problem with the VRTK highlighter, which jumps. Place the Stein under the tap. 
touch the tap to open it. Glug 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 and zish. So Pick basically, up your beer and enjoy. So basically, um, instead of having this long sequence, I can create whatever. This is just a coroutine. If you rather play an animation, if you want to do something crazy, go for it. Uh, there are not a lot of um, of limitations, I would say. You just have to see what fits you best. Also for the conditions, if you want to have a condition that um, that has a rotation, for example, which we don't have right now, you can create one. So it's totally up to the template developer or the company uh, that um, wants to um, have certain conditions in there. Um, so to go back to our uh, text-to-speech, I told you we have multi-language, which might be um, very important at Oktoberfest because there are people coming from everywhere. We have Italians, Australians, we have a lot of Germans, obviously. So um, within the training configuration, I simply switch here to German, for example. In here I have uh, another JSON with the same keys, but different... Um, but different strings, so we save it and uh, save our training just to be sure, and we start it. Okay. Bitte nimm den Krug vom Tisch. So also the multi-language works. You don't need to ha uh, know a lot about that. We can. Grab the mug again. Stell den Kurk unter den Hahn. The, uh, Öffne den Hahn, indem du ihn berührst. That might sound a bit funny now. Glück, 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 NCSH. <laughs> Nimm dein Bier und genieße es. So that's the whole idea behind this. So what do we have? We have um, this whole thing of you can basically uh, click around and build the whole training without any coding knowledge, plus the possibility for someone who has the coding knowledge to extend it. So where do we go from here? So let's say uh, you built this template, you gave it to a lot of content creators, you have uh, hundreds of applications. So what we have is uh, additionally to this uh, deployment system where you can uh, manage all your applications. I can show it, we have a web management console where you can upload all your built Unity applications and um, and manage them with permissions. You can add new versions and all that kind of stuff. So let's say we have uh, five trainings um, that are only a certain group. So we, we are a car manufacturer, we have 30 trainings. Only a certain group in, let's say, Munich are allowed to use these five. Another group in, let's say, Stuttgart are only allowed to use uh, these five. You can set this with permissions and um, and groups. And then on, and this is, in a cloud or on-premise, whatever you prefer. And then we have, uh, let's say, some kind of um, personalized Steam for um, your training applications. We call it the uh, interactive, interactive Hub uh, Discovery Portal. And in here, Andrea is logged in, for example, and she uh, only has the right to eight applications right now. And what she can do now, these are all already installed, so this button would be install or update if there's a new version or a new app for her available. In here, um, she would also have a description of the application, the version she is currently on, or a list of versions, and what changed to the previous um, version. So we, we provide the whole solution from, from creation to management to deployment. Yeah, that's from my side. Back to Andrea. Thank you, Thomas. So um, I hope this uh, gives you a good idea on how our tool works and how the different roles, how the different uh, people can uh, work together with our tool. Uh, in general, we think we put together a bunch of exciting features, but we are interested in feedback. Uh, we have more on the roadmap thinking uh, think about standalone devices, um, asset management um, in general. The question is, what, uh, what else is needed? So in this, with this purpose, uh, we are announcing our uh, limited partner program. Uh, we are giving free access to the platform to seven content partners. Uh, and here we have in mind uh, XR studios, artists, whoever is interested in creating trainings, 
uh, without programming knowledge or with programming no knowledge um, to evaluate this. We are interested in getting into a very close dialogue to get feedback um, and seeing whether together we can provide even more value to enterprise and uh, have a more um, attractive and powerful uh, value proposition. Um, this is basically all from our side. We're happy to take on questions. Um, thank you for being here and for listening to, till the end. And we're excited about feedback. Maybe can yeah. Maybe to uh, if you don't have a question right now, we are in the expo hall uh, in the Made with Unity expo hall where we can also show the training more in detail. So if you haven't. Uh, been with us yet? Feel free to come. We are there uh, today and tomorrow. Yeah. Thank you, uh, John Pauline Hansen, Technical University of Denmark. Um, I would like to know if you have modules to support the training progress of uh, individuals taking your programs. So, if I understand correctly, this goes a bit into um, analytics. Yes, to see what are the current performance, how were they doing yesterday, and, and what's the progress. This is something we are planning on the roadmap uh, to support a bit more extensively. At the moment, it's possible to track uh, the session start, let's say, session duration, but not so much about what is happening inside the training. Um, there you also have a difficult or a delicate topic about you know, um, measuring employees and usually in enterprise, it's quite a restric restricted topic. So we have to be kind of careful on how we go about that, so. Uh, I have one technical question. You mentioned you use VRTK for the VR. Yeah. Um, but um, what version do you using? Uh, we are still on the older version, the 3.3, not the new version, but uh, as far as I know, there's, I, I, wasn't in, uh, I wasn't part of the, the interaction thing, but as far as I know, there is an abstraction layer in between, so it doesn't really matter which, um, which interaction system you use. So if you prefer MRTK or whatever, whatever else, you can probably add this. And if you really don't like the whole thing, you can always write your own uh, conditions and behaviors matching your, your system. Okay, I'm just asking since it's kind of limiting on the Unity version, the SimVR version it supports. So that's why I'm asking basically. And uh, the, another question is, um, do a user need to know anything about the VRTK or is it your scripts they should add to the objects? Um, if, if the user needs to know anything about VRTK, yep. Um, the, I would say the, the template developer who codes should know about it. Um, it's good if you know the, the if you have the knowledge about VRTK. Obviously, uh, it's, it makes life always easier. But I would say if you're a pure training developer and know which which components you have to put on what to trigger certain conditions, you shouldn't have to know any any much knowledge about VRTK, other than, as I did, if there's a snap zone, you obviously need to put in a, um, like a prefab, a mock-up, a highlight object, or you have to change the colors and stuff like this. It definitely helps, I would say. All right, thanks. And, and the last question is, um, do you support the, just the desktop without the VR, like in some of the ways than you've shown with the default VRTK player? Uh, I, like 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 better uh, desktop version if you don't have a VR headset, since uh, the default uh, VRTK one is like not very convenient to use, as you've shown. I, I think I didn't understand the question. I'm sorry. Um, I mean, do you support the de the desktop without VR? Oh, um, uh, we are we are focusing on VR obviously, but um, since as I said, you can change the the behaviors and conditions as you want. You can also say, hey, if this button, I think this is what you mean, like on a 2D display, if this button is pressed, go to this step, and then if um, I know some list menu is open, go to this step. So what you put behind these behaviors and conditions, in the end, doesn't matter but we are focusing on uh, VR training. All right, thanks. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you.